Hey everybody, I'm Lance Koike, and today we're gonna go over a left posterior hip capsule stretch. Now, people often do this uh, like a pigeon stretch, is I believe what everyone calls it, and you get a good stretch in kind of like the inferior side of the posterior hip capsule. That can work and it can be okay, but what I think happens too often is that people increase the flexibility of their hamstring then, telling it to shut off and teaching it how to not be active. And that actually worsens the problem of a uh, overactive posterior hip capsule. Um, so instead, let's talk about the, post, or the pigeon stretch first and how I might do it a little bit differently. So I'm gonna give you a side. Normally it's the left hip that's tighter. So we're gonna, <laughs> and that's the case for me. So. Um, we are going to do that one instead of the right one. Um, as I cross here, I put the other foot in front of the other thigh, or I put my foot in front of my other thigh. And as I sink down into this, I want to make sure that I'm not, so I reach with this back leg here, you can see it straighten. And then I want to make sure that I'm not arching my back to get this stretch. What that will do is it will stretch more of the musculature and it's gonna take the load off of the hip capsule because as I extend my back, I limit the motion that my hip capsule actually has available. So as I come down, I wanna keep my hips, I'm exaggerating this motion, I wanna keep my low back rounded backward toward the, uh, the wall behind me and the ceiling above me. But I don't want to, you know, I don't have to exaggerate it this much. I just want it to be like a nice, normal, neutral amount of rounding. And then I'm just going to sit into it. <sighs> now, I like to use breathing and slight ab activity to tell me what's happening. So when I get to the end of my exhale, I feel a, a good cinching of my outer lower abdominals. And that's telling me I'm in a pretty good spot here. So I'm just going to hang out and breathe through my nose. Now, I'm super flexible, but I do have a stiff posterior hip capsule. Um, I don't need to be laying all the way on the ground to get a really good stretch for this one. I can even be up here with my arms pretty straight and still get some good action. Now, the progression would be, let me make sure I'm, I'm able to get there. The progression would be to bring my elbows down to the ground, and then I can still steer myself with my elbows. I can push into the ground there, but I've gotta make sure that I don't start to arch my back now to get that different stretch in the hip, because that, again, I'm not trying to stretch the muscle, I'm trying to stretch the posterior hip capsule. <sighs> So I'm just going to hang out here. And then every breath, you're trying to bring the breath down into your butt. That's what I like to tell people. That tells us that you're using the diaphragm, you're pushing down onto the guts, and the guts are pushing down onto the pelvic floor. If you can feel it in your butt, and if you can feel your back expand while you do this, then I'm feeling pretty good about how you're doing it. And now, I'm starting to lose it, and I'm losing sensation in my leg, so I'm gonna quit for now. Uh, that's how we're doing a modified pigeon stretch, but, that's, it's a good way to do it, um, and you can do it that way, but I prefer to do it a little bit more active. I prefer to stretch the posterior hip capsule with more of an exercise and less of just a passive stretch. Um, so, how I might do that, I call this uh, an all four right glute max, but we're gonna take away the glute max part of it. So I'm gonna give you a side view first, and then I'm gonna have to show you a butt view, which is gonna be a great angle for all of us. <coughs> Now, um, I, first, I wanna pull my belly up towards the ceiling ever so slightly. Same idea, I'm trying to get the outer, lower abdominals. Then I'm gonna take 
a baby step forward with my right leg. I'm not gonna shift onto my right leg. I'm gonna keep my weight back, 80% of my weight back on this left knee here. Now I hang on to that. I'm gonna reach with my right hand too and that will give me a little brace and it kind of helps push me back into that left hip. And I'm gonna take this left hand and I'm gonna make sure that it's just really long. I don't want it to push me over to the right, but I want it to push me up towards the ceiling. And when I run out of room, I run out of room. I don't have to overdo it, right? I don't wanna shrug because that's gonna undo what I'm trying to do here. Uh, so let's recap. I first, I pull my belly up. I got the outer lower abs. Baby step forward, baby step forward. Reach with the left. I should feel more left abs than right abs. I'm just gonna hang out here. This back toe, I don't care if it's straight or if it's not straight. Whatever's more comfortable for you. I kind of like it like this right now, so let's give it a shot. <sighs> Remember, we're trying to breathe into the butt. Keeping that belly pulled up. <sighs> okay, so that's the first step. You're probably not going to feel a whole lot of uh, hip capsule stretch yet because we haven't emphasized it. Now, you've got to make sure you can hammer that setup first. That's why I, I do all of that first because I need to set you up for success, you know. So let's go through it again. Baby step forward, baby step forward, pushing, bellies up, and now my next thing, nothing's going to change except everything. So I'm going to slide my right knee out now. Still got my weight over on my left leg, still pushing back through my right arm, still pushing up with my back, uh, with my left hand here. And it feels like my hips and my mid back are trying to turn to the left. I'm just gonna keep my eyes forward here and do the same breathing. So I started to feel a little pinch in my right hip. All I'm doing to make that go away is I'm relaxing my right thigh. Just like my hamstring, my adductor, my quad, whatever it is, I'm gonna let it chill out. <sighs> now I feel more of a stretch and a better fill on my inhale. Looks like things are going to the right spot, but most importantly, when I shut off that right leg, I got a lot of left inner thigh. Mine cramps really easily, but if you can get that, that turns this posterior hip capsule into an active exercise. So stretching is okay, but it, it goes away really quickly. If I can do it with an exercise, it's gonna last a little longer. So I get some activity on the left inner thigh. <sighs> My right hip's feeling a little bit better now. Oh my God, and I'm exhausted. Wow, okay. Um, so I'm feeling left inner thigh. I've got that right knee sliding away from me, right? I'm not just moving it out by moving my body with it. I'm moving it away from my body. And what that does is it turns, I can tell it works because I feel so unstable now in a good way. Um, so we're taking the right knee out like this and it turns my hips to the left. So I want them kind of like over the inside of my left knee while I'm doing this, if, or the zipper of my fake pants or whatever you got going on here. So I gotta keep that over to the left. And even now I feel like I'm loading my glute pretty well because I got that inhibition. <laughs> now, I'm gonna give you the other view because I think it's easier to see what we're doing here from this side. Okay, so baby step forward, baby step forward, pushing, pulling up with the abs, feeling pretty good there. Now, I'm gonna slide the right knee away, and I got this. 
Now I'm feeling a lot of right glutes, so I'm gonna let that right leg, a lot of right glutes, not a bad thing, but I'm gonna let that right leg come down, take some stress off the right glute, and try to do the, the spinning of my hips to the left. I'm trying to do that with my left inner thigh. And I can feel it like right away. And if I let go of this right leg some more, yeah. So there's a lot going on here. Oh man. Okay, now if I wanna increase the stretch, I'm gonna give you the side view real quick. If I wanna increase the stretch, all I gotta do is kinda sit back even more. I can do the same kind of thing, but I just gotta sit back some more, turn the hips. And now I'm sitting into that hip really, really well. Um, the way people mess this up is they do this. That's like the number one thing. The other thing that people do is they do this and they get a lot of right ab. I need the right ab to shut off if I'm gonna get the stretch in the left hip. Um, the other thing people do wrong on this all the time after they've heard about what to do is <laughs> they say, okay, I gotta put my weight on my left. So they do this and it looks like garbage and they just can't figure it out. They're like, I'm shifting to the left. It's because you're shifting too far to the left. So make sure your shoulders are not too far over and make sure your hip is not too far over. That, it seems counterintuitive, but that is counterproductive to what we're trying to do. <sighs> That's a lot. So we talked about the pigeon stretch. We talked about um, stretching with the all four, slightly more active left inner thigh exercise. What's going on here is I've got, oh my God, I've got a front and a back to my hip and there are um, ligaments on either side of these, right? So what tends to happen with the left hip is our, our pelvis likes to turn to the right and the front ligaments tend to get a little weaker, tend to say a little bit less to you and the back ones say a little bit more, get a little bit stiffer. So what we're trying to do is we're not just trying to introduce instability here. We're trying to uh, inhibit the posterior side, those stiffer hip capsule things, but we're trying to bring it in together with some uh, active muscle tension so that we have some stability to replace it. So this inner thigh and the glute that I can now load are gonna help replace the stiff hip capsule that has been troubling me. Um, after you do a passive stretch like that, um, I like to go into something even more active, uh, like a sideline hip shift. What I'm gonna do here is I just pull the left knee back behind the right knee. I try to bring the left ab up toward the left shoulder and I get that left inner thigh again, but now I'm just like, I'm focusing on that. I'm not getting a super stretch in the posterior hip capsule, but it'd be good if I could. And then if you can hammer that, what you wanna to try to do is maybe pick both up, pick, uh, sorry, your knee and your foot up. I forgot you're not in my brain. Pick your knee and your foot up like this. Still get that left inner thigh and then try to rotate the foot up as high as you can. Like this is about what I got, but I have the inner thigh and I have this glute now on the outside, which is, again, it's going to help my um, stability in that hip. Before you do all of this, you need to make sure that you can round your back pretty well. And I tried to cue it in the exercise, but if you're having trouble with that, I like to put like a pillow under the left knee and do not the pigeon exactly, but do what I call a rock back. <sighs> if you have a pillow under your left knee, it'll like elevate the knee like this. And so when you rock back like this, you really scrunch up that left side. Um, and that works super well because it rounds the midsection and the pelvis. Um, if you don't have that, you can do it like we did the pigeon stretch. So I'm just gonna reach back like this. I'm gonna stay over, put my chest 
over this left thigh and try to keep it down like that. And every exhale, I just try to sink a little bit more. Doing it this way is good for inhibiting the right ab too. So if you feel like that is taking over or your right adductor is taking over during some of these exercises, that might be a good thing to try before you do them. Um, that is more than you ever wanted to know about inhibiting the left posterior hip capsule. Hopefully this loosens up your hips. Um, try it. I normally recommend people do it twice a day, five sets of five breaths of whatever you're doing. Okay, so just make sure you're diligent about it because if you, if you don't do it daily, like there's nothing to undo what you're <laughs> already, what you're stiffening up every day. And you've got years of practice of stiffening up that hip. So you're going to have to fight it. And if you stop doing these exercises, it's probably just going to come back. Uh, you can probably do them less frequently once you get on top of things, but just keep that in mind. You got to be diligent about taking care of your body.